Following harvest, professional producers today face three important challenges. The first is crop residue management. Also, growers need to eliminate compaction and re-establish the pore space into the soil to improve internal drainage and water holding capacity. The final step is to level the soil afterwards so that all the corn plants can come up and emerge uniformly. Crop residue management today presents several challenges or opportunities for producers. The first is to look at the nutritive value of residues after harvest and see if we can cycle those back for the following crop year. In corn stock, studies show that up to 175 pounds of potash potentially are held in the stocks following harvest and 25 pounds of phosphorus. If these stocks are sized and mixed into the soil profile, those nutrients can be liberated and cycled and available to the crop next year. Another challenge for growers today is just the operational obstacles that some of the new hybrids present. The stay green characteristics and longer ear fill periods, as well as enhanced lignification in some hybrids, presents challenges for machinery and planting practices in the spring, if not managed in the fall following harvest. For example, root balls can be very wiry and get caught in row units and so forth. In addition, these lignified hybrids uh, can be persistent in the soil seedbed for several seasons. Some studies will show that as much as 20 to 30 percent higher lignification levels in these stocks versus the parent isolines. The third challenge or opportunity in crop residue management really has to do with soil organic matter. Today we hear a lot about cellulosic ethanol and the removal of residues from fields or that tillage can actually reduce soil organic matter. As residues are incorporated into the soil, they do decompose over time and can leave stable organic matter forms in the soil profile to enhance the exchange capability and nutritive holding capacity of the soil. The residue will decompose and as long as we don't overdo it, we can see soil organic matter levels actually accumulate. Studies have shown that this uh, will happen over protracted periods of time to increase the water holding capacity and fertilizer holding capacity of the field. One of the things that holds back crops from reaching their yield potential is soil compaction. Roots can't explore the whole profile for their nutrients. Water is not obtained fully to get through drought and stress periods. And so by managing compaction, we can improve the root bed of the soil. One of the most critical elements of combination fall primary tillage is soil output. By reducing the clod size to six inches or less out the back of a tillage pass in the fall, growers can dramatically reduce the risk of emergence problems in the spring. As much as 10% of the stand can be in jeopardy if clods are too big or the holes they roll out of are left in the field in spite of overwintering. If done successfully, crop residue management, compaction management, and seedbed management can be done in fall combination primary tillage and contribute greatly to a field's yield potential. The first operation in combination fall primary tillage is crop residue management. This is done with the Akala Tiger 875's X-Disc frame. In its gangs, the Akala Tiger 875 features 26 inch earth metal blades. These blades are formed from metal that is quarried originally from original iron ore sources in mines and not recycled steel. It is also formed at a certain temperature and quenched with water at the same time. What this does is it reduces warping and other features found on alternative blades. The spools between the blades add weight to the gangs to increase the cutting pressure and the clearance for residue to flow through the gangs. In addition, scraper assemblies keep the gang flowing free of plugging and mud and other accumulations. This allows the grower a wide weather envelope in which to operate. Research shows that if successfully done, crop residue management can liberate nutrition from the stocks that are present in the field. Crop residue management can also help uh, enhance stands and emergence in the spring because corn seeds will be placed in good contact with the soil and emerge uniformly. If they're clustered into a bunch of residue, the plant is in jeopardy of not emerging at its uh, proper time, and this can affect yield potential. The second purpose of combination fall primary tillage is to reestablish soil tilth. Growers for over 30 years have done this using the Tiger Tiger Point. 
This point features a hardened cap thickened this year on the Akala Tiger 875 for more durability and ruggedness, along with the wings. One of the questions most frequently asked about combination fall primary tillage is how deep should I set the points? The Akala Tiger point requires that we set it one inch below the hard pan layer. Well, growers can go to the field and dig a small pit about the size of a five gallon pail and take a pocket knife and with the tip simply draw it up from the bottom until the firmness is felt. Then measure to the soil surface as indicated by the string and it's approximately 10 and a half inches from the soil surface. Remembering that then when we make the fall tillage pass and set the Akal Tiger points to run at approximately 12 inches we've optimized that lift, twist, and roll action of the Tiger Point. Let's inspect a representative pass from the Akala Tiger 875 as seen in this soil profile pit. The Tiger Points were set to run at 12 inches deep based on the fact that the hard pan was approximately 10 and a half inches. By doing this, the lift, twist, and roll action provided a V breakout in the soil. That, along with coarse fracture, as easily seen between the point passes, allows water to infiltrate into the soil, not only to the depth of tillage, but deeper into the entire profile. A good Midwestern soil should hold that three inches of available water for every foot of soil, and allow two, inch, two inches of uh, water to infiltrate during rainstorms. So we now have set the stage for good water infiltration. The final phase of combination fall primary tillage is the soil leveling function. On the Akala Tiger 875, this is accomplished in two steps. The first is with the opposing blades on a common mount. These blades draw soil back into the shank path where the Akala Tiger just was and begins the leveling function. Subsequent to that, this rolling reel rolls across the soil and sizes clods, tuck residue, and fills in low spots. During the development phase of the Akala Tiger 875, Case IH performed field research in five states over a five year period. Using farm scale machinery, we collected two million data points by hand and discovered that as much as seven to nine percent of the stand can be at risk for no other reason than the clods were too big and the holes they came out of persisted all the way through overwintering and even after spring tillage passes. By achieving our target output of no clod or hole being bigger than six inches behind the Akala Tiger 875, agronomic design could recover these plants at emergence and all the way through harvest to achieve closer to 100% net effective stand and yield potential. So let's review in combination fall primary tillage the three objectives achieved by the Akala Tiger 875. First, crop residue management. For tough stalks, for lignified stalks, and other challenges, we have the X-disc frame with earth metal blades. Secondly, for compaction and soils that need to have improved drainage and water holding capacity, we have the Tiger Point. Thirdly, to achieve the agronomic output and level soil conditions out the back and improved emergence in the spring, we have the double-edged rolling reel with hydraulic option along with the leveler assemblies. To learn more about Case IH agronomic design and to receive email updates, visit our website at caseih.com. I invite you to visit your local Case IH dealer to learn more about the Akala Tiger 875 and other agronomically designed Case IH equipment.